Hi, Paul. Hi, Michaela. How are you? Great. Today, we're talking about whether sellers should always accept the highest offer. It may seem like an easy choice, but it's actually much more complicated than that. It absolutely is. So you want to thank our sponsors, Opus Escrow and The Money Store. Um, so, Paul, should sellers always accept the highest offer? Well, the simple answer is no. And of course, you might assume that the highest offer is the best offer, but that is not always the case. Uh, sometimes, of course, the seller will accept the highest offer, but there are a lot of other factors in the contract that need to be paid attention to before deciding which offer is best. Can you expand on that? Sure. So one of the factors that, that you need to consider before accepting um, the best offer is, is this property going to appraise for the price that the buyer is offering? Okay, so let's just use some general numbers. If, uh, if your house is listed at 700,000 and you get an offer for, let's say, uh, 750, 775 in a, in a bidding war, you're gonna need other sales in the neighborhood to justify that price for the bank. The bank is going to send out an appraiser to appraise this property. And there need to be three sales, three recent sales of similar size homes to justify that price. Okay, so if you're asking 700,000 and a buyer comes in at 750, 775, are there three other sales in the neighborhood that justify that sale price? Now, if the appraisal comes in, in let's say at 700, um, is the buyer going to be able to make up the difference in cash? Because the bank is not going to lend above that appraised price. Okay, so if, if the property appraises for 700, and the buyer offered 750, he's going to have to pay cash for that $50,000 difference. And then the question is, um, does he still qualify for the loan if he's spending an additional 50,000 cash for the difference between the appraised price and his offer price? So if the buyer accepts that offer, if the seller accepts that offer, and now he's opened escrow and he's you know going through the escrow process and the appraisal comes back two weeks later comes in low what does the seller do right if the buyer waived the appraisal contingency that of course uh puts the seller in a better position but you still need to make sure that the seller that the buyer can perform if the appraisal comes in low so that is that is one factor to consider um, if you're going to accept an offer that is uh, that is you know the highest offer that might be above your asking price. Are there um, other items besides appraisal contingency that a seller should be cautious about? Sure. Another another factor to look at is how long is the buyer's inspection period? Mm. Okay, so the standard contract gives a buyer 17 days to complete their inspections. Okay, you could have a home inspection, which could lead to other inspectors coming out. Uh, you could have a plumbing inspect inspection, electrical inspection, uh, chimney inspection. Uh, if there's water damage, you could do a mold inspection. So there's all these inspectors that could come look at the property. Standard contract is 17 days. It is very, very possible to get the inspections done in that period. Um, but if, if a buyer asks for more time, how much more time are they asking for? Are they asking for 21 days? Maybe there's a holiday in the middle of that, of that period. So you might need a little bit more time, but if they need 30 days or 45 days, you know, what is the reason for such a long inspection period? And, uh, mind you, you know, the clock is ticking. Escrow is already opened. Um, the status has been changed in the system, so other buyers are not really paying attention to that property as much if it's not in an active status. And um, what can happen is after the buyer completes their inspections, they can, you know, give the seller a long laundry list of repair requests. And uh, now the seller is kind of blindsided by this long list of repair of repair requests. 
And what do they do? Do they do all of this work? Do they do, they do some of the work? Do they give the, give the buyer a credit in lieu of repairs? So they're, they're, they can be stressed out, understandably, because you know time has been ticking. And now all of a sudden, the buyer has given them a long laundry list of repairs. So you want to tighten up that inspection period, right? If, it's, if they ask for more, than, more time than what is reasonable, you want to you want to shorten that time period so the seller is not wasting time, um, you know, waiting on the buyer's uh, request for repairs. Okay, so you've talked about appraisal contingency. You've talked about inspection um, period contingency. What about financing? How does that affect? Um, sure, the offer? there's multiple offers. Uh, you need to pay attention to how much. Uh, down how much how much down is the uh, buyer putting down and how much are they financing okay standard purchase is 20 percent okay 20 percent down some buyers put down more because they want to keep that monthly payment that mortgage payment down and you know quite a few buyers qualify by putting down less maybe they're putting down 10 percent five percent three and a half percent um you know still qualified with the with the lender Okay, but all things being equal, you know, it's nice to have a, a, a down payment of 20% or more. Um, and I found, you know, over the years that if somebody's putting down less than 20%, um, the, the buyer gets into the underwriting process, which happens towards the end of the escrow period. And now all of a sudden there's a second pair of eyes looking on their mortgage paperwork, okay? And are there unanswered questions? Are there, are, there, are there challenges that are gonna pop up that are unforeseen to the seller that are going to delay this, uh, this closing? Because if the bank is you know, letting the borrower buy a significant amount of money, um, more than 80%, then they can you know, look at that file a little bit more critically than if the buyer is putting down you know, 20% or more. So that's another factor. You know, if you've got multiple offers and, uh, you know, one buyer is putting down 20%, another buyer is putting down, let's say 5%, maybe the 5% buyer is offering more than the 20% down buyer, okay? But in that particular situation, you know, a seller might want to take the lower offer, even if the 20% if the um, buyer is offering less than the 5% down buyer, if that makes, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, can you give us an example of um, perhaps um, a seller took the higher offer and maybe shouldn't have? Sure. Well, I've had uh, experiences with all three of these situations, right? Um, somebody offering significantly above the asking price, got very excited about the property, uh, property did not appraise, Okay, you're already you're already in escrow. You've already spent time as a seller uh, waiting for this transaction to close, and now the appraisal come came in low. Okay, what do you do? Okay, there's basically there's a couple options. Um, one is the seller can let the property go for uh, the appraised price. Of course, they don't want to do that because they accepted a higher offer and the buyer offered that that much more. Mm -hmm. um, the buyer could if they really really want that property and they still qualify you know they could still pay that full uh offer price even though the appraise appraisal came in low but most most often i found that the two parties meet somewhere in the middle so again using our numbers if uh you know if the asking price was 700 the buyer offered 750 appraisal came in around 700 maybe they settle at 725 Okay, so the buyer has to come up with 25,000 out of pocket, seller has to come down uh, 25,000 from the price that they originally accepted. So that's, that's kind of the common solution is mm -hmm. to meet somewhere in the middle. On the inspection piece, um, what I found is if a buyer gives a long laundry list of inspections or, or of repairs, um, I say to the seller, you know, look at the at the items that you would want fixed if you were going to continue living here. What are those red flag items? Okay, um, if it's just asking for a bunch of GFI plugs to be changed out, 
um, then maybe that's not worthy of repairing because it's it's more of an upgrade than really a repair. Or maybe you give the buyer a modest credit for items like that, but take care of the red flag items. Um, so those are kind of two solutions in those in those situations. Okay, so you've touched on inspection contingency periods. You've touched on property appraisals and the down payment and the financial component. Great. Yeah, so, three, uh, so three factors to, to think about, you know, is the highest offer the best offer or maybe another offer received is, is better. Great. Well, thank you, Paul, so much for your time. This is excellent information, really helpful. Um, and that wraps up this episode of 15 Minutes with Paul Warren. So don't forget to subscribe and never miss a future episode. Paul's contact information is in the show notes as always. So if you have a suggestion for a future episode or questions, go ahead and reach out. If you have a few minutes, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. It's totally free for you. And it goes a long way in helping people discover the podcast. Of course. Thank you, Opus Escrow and The Money Store. We greatly appreciate it. Great. See you next week.